This video was made possible by the Content Creator Program. The Content Creator Beta Server is temporarily made available for the purpose of allowing the community a first look at a new champion coming to the contest. Hey everyone, Shadow here, and welcome to another Marvel Contest of Champions video. So, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at Apocalypse. He's the latest addition to the contest, and I've heard mixed things about him, but I haven't had a chance to play around with him myself. Uh, or take a look at him. So we're going to look at him together. We're going to deep dive into him. So first thing, uh, you'll notice that he is SIG 200. And we'll talk about his signature ability in a little bit. And he's also ranked 3. This is the levels that we used to get the new champions at. And a level that I could see uh, people getting to practically, you know. So it's a good showcase. And then we're going to max him out. 565 and take a look at how he compares to this level you know how well he scales all right so let's look at his attributes first and you can see here his health his attack and I am running suicide so bear that in mind when you're looking at things like his damage uh, let's switch this over here and uh, doesn't have a high crit rating his crit rating does not impress me right there. Um, I like the crit resistance, so it looks like he is going to be um, a little bit tanky. He has a good armor rating as well and block proficiency. All three of those combined are what you want to look at, not individual. And combined, they make for a fairly tanky champion. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, tags and bio which are at the bottom now they moved it and you can see here uh, he is offensive damage over time and also defensive tank interesting he's metal so magneto is probably gonna rip him apart he's villain so if you have blade with the Ghost Rider synergy uh, and there's some other champions that uh, do well against villains uh, you'll have a good time against him. And uh, he's an XL. So good for a uh, variant just for that reason alone. I don't know how well he actually uh, performs there. All right. And you can see his bio there. Now let's take a look at the synergy bonuses. Now what I like to do when I'm looking at synergy bonuses is I look at who the synergy is with as well as what the synergy does. Because if they're giving you a champion that is not really good to help you out, then it's just a slot being taken up on your team that could go to someone else that might help you even better than the Synergy does. So you want to look at both of those things. So this first one, he has a Synergy with himself. So gain 15% attack rating for every mutant on the team excluding himself. So you can have five people on the team. So if you have four mutants, that's the max, you will gain 15% attack rating for each. That is impressive. Go in with an all mutant team for that synergy. Uh, Magneto, who just got a rework. I could see me going in with Magneto, Colossus, Omega Red, you know, um, that that looks good to me that looks good all right next one up and right off the bat i'm looking at who this synergy is with and i don't see myself bringing any of these onto the team so the synergy would have to be really good all right so apocalypse starts the first fight in the quest with maximum genetic code that's actually really good and that's probably why they gave you these chump champions uh, at least they are for right now uh maybe they'll get a rework uh, but that's actually really good, and we'll talk about that genetic code and what it does for him uh, when we look at his abilities. But starting out with a maximum, now I can see myself perhaps bringing in, you know, maybe a Mr. Sinister. Um, i probably bring him over Cable and uh, uh, Kang there. So let's see what the next one is. All right, so it's OG Storm. Each hit of a heavy attack into a shocked opponent has a 60% chance to inflict an additional shock debuff. 
dealing 90% of modified attack, modified, not base, modified attack over eight seconds. Something to keep that in mind, that it's modified attack. If this champion is a horseman of apocalypse, we'll talk about that. Shock effects last 50% longer, and heavy attacks refresh all shock debuffs on the opponent. So that's actually pretty nasty. If they are not shock immune, and they cannot, you know, shrug off the uh, shock, you could actually do a lot of damage and then keep refreshing it, you know, with the heavy attack. That that actually has a lot of potential. Uh, OG Storm is not the worst champion. I actually like her. Uh, I don't use her a whole lot, but I could definitely see myself uh, bringing her on a team. Now, here's the Storm I really like. Storm Pyramid X, so I already like it. After charging her dormant prowess, Storm has a 70% chance to trigger a passive prowess for each prowess buff that is already active, each increasing special damage by 20% for six seconds. That can be amazing. Don't know, we'll have to play around with that. Uh, if this champion is a horseman of the apocalypse gain 30% critical rating 30% critical rating did you hear me 30% critical rating and 20% prowess potency so already the prowess is doing a lot of damage what this does when she's a horseman of the apocalypse is that she's going to be critting more so that's more damage and then each of her prowesses are going to be 20% more effective. That is beast mode, okay? Um, that, I would like to play around with that if I have the time uh, and see what that does for Storm uh, herself. But that looks good. That looks really good. Uh, Bringer of Death, Psylocke. Uh, very underrated champion. Uh, I like her. Basic attacks have a 30% chance to grant a Psy charge, okay? Uh, if this champion is a horseman of the apocalypse, uh, she'll gain 50% critical damage rating and 30% attack rating when striking the opponent at zero power. So if you don't know about Psylocke, uh, if you play her well uh, or the right way, uh, you can power lock your opponent. You want to wait until they use a special and they have very little power and then you fire off your special one. And it will drain them, and if it drains them to zero power, they are power locked. So they will be power locked if you do uh, what you need to do, you know, not get hit a whole bunch. Uh, they will be power locked for the rest of the fight. And what this means is that if she's a horseman, she's going to be critting like crazy, and she's going to be hitting harder. When you get the opponent power locked that way, that's actually a really nice synergy for her. Very, very nice synergy. Makes her quite nice. All right. And then we've got Gambit, who is going to be getting a rework. Uh, he doesn't have the rework at the time of this video, but he's he's getting a rework. So he may soon become a very good champion to bring on your team. Uh, each time a kinetic charge is gained, there is a 70% chance to gain an additional one. So let me tell you one of the things that is a pain with Gambit. He gets interrupted as you are trying to charge to gain your kinetic charges. Every time he gets hit, he it resets. It interrupts it, and he's got to do it again. So as long as they keep hitting you, and it doesn't matter if they're hitting into your block, it will still interrupt it. So what this does is it makes it so that you're gaining them faster. The same amount of time that you uh, would be gaining them otherwise, uh, you're, you're, you have a very good chance, 70% chance to double the rate at which you gain them. So that's actually pretty useful. And like I said, he's getting a rework. So that one issue may not be an issue. Uh, if this champion is a horseman of the apocalypse, each kinetic charge grants 10% perfect block chance up to a max of 100%. I cannot wait till Gambit gets a rework. Uh, this next one is with Wolverine, who just recently came into the contest as a five-star. 
Uh, Wolverine's personal bleeds have a chance, based on critical rating, to be critical bleeds dealing damage based on critical damage rating. And if he is a horseman of the apocalypse, gain 30% critical rating. You see how that um, synergizes with each other. Uh, and 40% critical damage rating. So what that translates into is if he's a horseman of the apocalypse, he's going to be critting more often and his crits are going to do big boy bleeds. Okay? That's what that means. That's going to make him crazy because he has a strong regen, but his damage is not the best. That will make Wolverine on a whole new level. And finally, we've got Archangel, who should need no introduction. You already know how powerful he is. If you don't, you need to watch some videos. Uh, each hit of a heavy attack into a stunned opponent has a 10% chance to pause all neurotoxins for three seconds. So that means it's going to be doing even more damage. Uh, if this champion is a horseman of the apocalypse, neurotoxin stun duration is increased by 30 seconds. So when his neurotoxin expires, they get stunned. And this means they're going to get stunned for longer, which means you'll be able to get those heavies in, which means it'll pause the neurotoxins. You see how that works? That looks really good. So apocalypse makes these guys better that's what he's doing here all right so apocalypse's synergies he's making a lot of these champions really good the only ones that affect him it looks like are these first two all right all the other ones are helping the synergy partner all right let's go over to his abilities now look at his signature ability when Apocalypse doesn't participate in a fight, he enters his rejuvenation chamber to slumber. At the start of his next fight, he regenerates a certain amount of health. Uh, this is what it looks like at SIG 200, 2060.9. For each fight, his teammates won while he slumbered. And this can stack up to four, uh, sorry, up to two times. So that means that, um, well, how I'm reading that is that he has a possible regeneration of 4,000, if you have the two stacks, 4,000 per fight that you let him sleep and don't fight with him. How useful is that? I don't know. Uh, I know it will save you uh, potions. You know, if he gets hurt in a fight, you know, you can then just fight with some other people because you probably don't want to use him for every fight anyway. And that can help you out but unless the quest is really long that's not a whole lot honestly and it might just be better to, to drop in a potion or two that you can farm from realm of legends so my initial impression is that he does not need to be awakened that's a very nice to have for sustainability over the course of the quest to save you potions but that's not a reason that i would want to awaken him so for me, that awakened ability, no. Okay. Now let's get to these uh, abilities. Genetic enhancement, which uh, will stack up to four times. Uh, you start each quest with one persistent genetic code. This becomes two if defending and three if defending on a final boss node. Knocking out a non-robot opponent grants one genetic code. You'll gain two genetic codes at the start of the fight if you're fighting a mutant. And at the start of the fight, you will gain an indefinite passive prowess for each genetic code, each increasing special attack damage by 40%. Okay, let's stop there. So what that is telling you is that that potency of the passive prowess is going to be increased per genetic code. Do you remember the synergy that I said was really good? You start maxed. So that means you are going to have the max number of genetic codes at the start of the fight, and that is four, looks like. And you're gonna get 40% more attack, special attack damage per 
genetic code. That is powerful. That is really powerful. And get this, at three plus, you become stun immune while striking. And if you have that synergy, that means you're gonna be stun immune right off the bat. At four plus, striking the opponent's block with a light attack inflicts a stun debuff. That looks like fun. If you have that synergy, and we will activate it for Realm of Legends, then right into their block, they're gonna get stunned. Wow. Cooldown is 12 seconds though, so you can't just stun lock them. Um, and this has no effect against well-timed blocks. Okay. So if they parry, that's not gonna work. Uh, total molecular control. Uh, he's gonna develop immunities, okay? Uh, he'll develop an immunity to bleed, incinerate, disorient, um, while he is inflicted or is suffering from them. Uh, that is nice. I would love to have him just immune, uh, like some other champions, but that's interesting. Uh, it, it will, you know, span the entire quest. It persists for the entire quest. Uh, so that's an interesting mechanic. Uh, each time the ev opponent evades, 10% chance to bypass the evade. So that means you're going to have to deal with the evades at least for a little bit until he can um, build up where he can uh, shut them down. Like I said, this makes him more of like a ramp up type champion. And I've never been a fan of ramp up champions, but I don't know how well this will work for him. So uh, we'll see. Opponents suffer 100% purify ability accuracy reduction. So they're not purifying anything. All right, heavy attacks. Uh, they both hits of his heavy attack will inflict a bleed over seven seconds. And it refreshes uh, personal weakness, poison, concussion, and degeneration effects on the opponent. So that's that's useful. Um, if you can get those uh, on them, just keep spamming your heavy. It'll keep uh, refreshing. Not bad. All right, so special attacks. If the opponent is suffering from a damage over time effect, special attacks debuffs trigger on activation and last 30% longer. So once you have them already bleeding, poisoned, uh, any of that, uh, your special attacks will trigger on activation and last 30% longer. Uh, now that's we, we'll talk about the debuffs of the uh, special attacks, um, but uh, what that basically means is say they're they're bleeding, and uh, well I'll talk about that when we get to the uh, special attack one here. Each hit deals a burst of uh, physical damage for each personal weakness, poison, concussion, or degeneration on the opponent. Okay, that is all special attacks. Every special attack this applies to. So now let's get into the individual special attacks. So his special attack one inflicts a debuff determined by the last light or medium attack thrown. If you're fighting a mutant or if Apocalypse has four genetic code, remember that synergy, it'll trigger both. So the light attack will inflict a non-stacking weakness, reducing attack rating. Medium attack inflicts a non-stacking poison, dealing direct damage and reduces health recovery by 30% uh, percent over 25 seconds. So your special attack one, based on what you did last, so if you hit them, like for example, um, we often combo into a special, so you'll hit them, and if the last hit of your combo is a medium, and then you fire your special one, they'll get a poison on them. If you combo into a light attack, I mean, you uh, end in a light attack and then combo into your special one, it'll do the weakness. And if you have four of the codes, it's gonna do both of them regardless. Very nice. Now, what I was talking about here earlier, if they already have the bleed or the poison or anything like that, then 
your special attack one is going to trigger that on activation. Now, what I gather from that, it means you don't have to actually um, hit them or it doesn't wait until the end. I'm not clear on that, uh, but they will last 30% longer. Okay, so that, that looks interesting. All right, special attack two. It's going to work similarly to special attack one, okay? Only with special attack two, the light attack inflicts a concussion and the medium inflicts a non-stacking degeneration, okay? I'm getting a, a, a pattern here. You'll notice that the light attacks don't seem to apply a damaging debuff, while the medium ones do. Special attack one, the medium does a poison. Special attack two, the medium does a degeneration. And then you have the special attack three, where all personal weakness, poison, concussion, and degeneration effects on the opponent are re-triggered at 100% potency and paused indefinitely. Wow. This potency increase does not stack multiple times. Wow. That looks interesting. So you get some of these up there. Um, I guess I, I'm going to try it. See if you can get a special one and a special two attack. Get a poison and a degen on them. Then fire off a special three. And uh, see how that works. And I believe you can refresh those with heavies. So I'm thinking that you fire off your special one. And you just keep it up, you know, fire off your heavy attacks when you can. Fire off a special two. Keep firing your heavies to keep those going until you get to a special three. Fire that off and they're locked in. Very interesting. Okay. If no personal weakness, poison, concussion, or degeneration effects are active, inflict two at random. But they won't get the additional potency and not be paused. So you do have to get those in there first before the special three. And finally, let's talk about these horsemen of apocalypse. Now, we often call the horsemen uh, differently right now, and we're gonna have to think of a different way to refer to them, I guess, because in the abyss, uh, the four horsemen refer to Nick Fury, Doom, uh, Human Torch, and Aegon. They've been called the Four Horsemen because they are uh, part of the ideal team to go into the Abyss with to reduce your item usage and, and resource usage. But now we have officially named Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Okay, so what's up with these Horsemen of Apocalypse? You saw the um, synergies where it was giving them extra abilities when they're Horsemen. Once per quest... If Apocalypse has four genetic code, remember that synergy, I told you it was a really good one, he can spend them in the pre-fight screen. So, warning, you can start with the four, but if you use it, you're not going to have four, but you can gain more in the fight. Okay? So, just a, a warning, uh, because you do have benefits for having four, but if you use one, make sure it's worth it. All right? Places a cross-fight on the next fight, the next mutant, mutant teammate to enter this fight, not including Apocalypse, becomes a horseman for the rest of the quest. So you don't have to keep spending the genetic code. All right. And look at down here what the horsemen gain. And that's not including those synergies that we're talking about. This is just any mutant that becomes the horseman, okay? 100% bleed resistance, so boom, they're suicide friendly. Uh, an indefinite prowess, increasing special, special attack damage by 50%, 30% offensive ability accuracy, go unblockable for two seconds when the opponent purifies a debuff. I'm looking at you, Agent Venom. Uh, um, also, Mole Man. Uh, once per fight, go unstoppable for three seconds when struck. That is beast mode. All right, so that is Apocalypse. He's looking interesting on paper. I don't know how it will work, but he certainly makes 
others better. That's what it seems like um, what stands out to me the most about Apocalypse here. Now, whether he's a powerful champion in his own right remains to be seen. But he definitely has a lot to offer in the way of his synergies and this pre-fight, cross-fight ability, Horseman of the Apocalypse. All right, so let's go into Realm of Legends and play around with him a little bit. All right, so before we go into Realm of Legends, I just wanted to show you the synergies that we have active here. Uh, first up, we've got Magneto. You can see he has this synergy with Archangel. Okay, he's also got this one with Apocalypse himself. Um, Archangel brings this to the table here. Colossus. He has a synergy with Mr. Sinister. Uh, and then we've got Apocalypse himself. And these are the synergies he has active. Of course, the one he has with himself. And then we've got the Mr. Sinister. So I have the maximum of those codes. And then we've got Archangel himself. Okay. Uh, that'll be interesting. And then Mr. Sinister himself has this here. Okay. Very, very nice. All right. So let's go ahead in here. And I have not fought with him at all. So this is the very, very first time that I'm going to be fighting with Apocalypse. So let's go ahead. And you can see the uh, pre-fight here. Okay. And um, let's uh, get on in here. Okay, you see the little four up there? So he's got Max. Okay, we're just gonna take a look at the um, his uh, special attacks first before we try and do anything. Okay, see the weakness and the poison on him. Let's see, boom. Heavy attack refreshed him. Everything's going the way that I thought it would, okay. So now let's build up to a special two. And before we get there, we can uh, hopefully if uh, he lets us do it. Here we go. Boom, heavy, refreshed it. Okay. Now we got a special two going. He's got all of that on him. <laughs> that special two cracks me up. All right, so now what we want to do is just try to build up to a special uh, three. All right, just barely got that because he did not want to give me uh, that parry so I can get a safe heavy off. All right, and uh, we're going to try to build up to a special three. Come on. One heavy will uh, ensure. There we go. Okay, then we'll uh, fire off that special uh, three. Thought he was a big man. Apparently not. All right, so, yep, look at that. They're indefinite. Look at that. Okay, so that's uh, that can be useful. And let's fire off another uh, special two once he's uh, done with his. That's doing some uh, nice damage. Keep in mind that I am running suicides. That's not bad, considering um, how tanky he is. It's not bad. Let's do a special one. Woo! Not bad. And all the while, he has just got all those degens on him. Okay, let's do another one of those special ones. Hmm. Okay. Nice. 
not bad. Not bad at all. All right. So what we're going to do in our next video, we'll rank him up and we'll come back in here and uh, fight that fight again. 150 hits even. So before we end the video, I wanted to show you guys this chart. Don't worry, I'm not going over each and every one of these things. You can pause the video and take a look at it. But this chart was made by Cam, a fellow content creator program member. And I find his analysis very spot on and insightful. And I find it useful when I'm doing uh, my own research into the champion. So you can take a look at what he says. I agree with him. When I was first looking into Apocalypse, I was hearing a lot of negative things about him uh, from certain community members. They were saying Apocalypse was bad. He was a dud. Well, my personal experience, which you all saw, this is the first time I have played with him, has not been that. Uh, I don't see him being a dud at all. Some people even uh, were calling him pillow hands like the old Luke Cage was called. Uh, implying that his damage was just not that good. I don't see that. His damage seemed very good, and this was a rank three apocalypse. All right, and it was very easy. I think Cam mentions that here. It was very easy to keep up a lot of uh, his debuffs. Once I got to that special three, I was done. You know, so I like apocalypse. I think he's a really good champion, but. Feel free to leave a comment. Let me know if you agree or disagree and feel free to leave your reasons why. Uh, are you going to plan to go for him? I am perfectly okay if people think he's a dud and don't want to go for him in the arena because he might go low enough to entice me to grind for him in the arena. But that's going to do it, guys. Thank you all for watching the video. Feel free to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and found it useful. And uh, you all have a blessed day.